Hi, I'm back with another video about Cal State East Bay's computer science program. In the last video, I talked about the lower division coursework, and now we're moving right along to the next category, which is the upper division courses. For transfer students, this is going to be the first set of classes you take at East Bay. Like in your first semester, you're probably gonna take three or four of these courses. This one is going to be a long list because it's 27 units, nine classes in total, and all of them are required to be completed. Before I start talking about each class, I wanna take a moment to really congratulate you for sticking with computer science. If you're taking these classes right now, or if you're going to be enrolling in them in the future, congratulations, good on you. I can't say that you've passed the most difficult part, but I can say good job for making it this far. So let's look at these classes and all of their names at East Bay. There really isn't any um, rules here other than you need to take data structures and algorithms first because it is the prerequisite for everything else. Once you take that class, then you can literally just start from the top of the list, work your way down, and then you'll be good to go. The first class is Data Structures and Algorithms, which is a very heavy coding class. And the language is C++ at East Bay, much like a lot of other schools. This class is going to be so important. Like you need to let the information literally be infused with your soul. That's how important this class is. Like everyone knows all the interview questions are going to be about data structures. And even after the semester is over, you are responsible for doing your own interview prep. Like you're gonna have to learn how to solve lead code type of problems, read that book, cracking the code interview. All of that follows after you take this class. And if I were to summarize the class, it's like this. In a restaurant, they don't collect the dirty dishes, like the plates, and it's not the case that they put one on the table, then they put the next one next to it, right? Like they don't cover a table with it. They stack the plates on top of each other because it saves space and that's easier to move around. It's kind of silly to think about life like that, but that's exactly how it is in computer science. You need to be wise with how you store your data and you need to be mindful of the operations that your program is doing. That way you can write better code and actually create more elaborate programs. Second class is Programming Language Concept, PLC for short, which is a very moderate amount of theory type of class, but your homeworks are going to be coding. Though each homework assignment, you have to code in a different language. Most likely you only know Python and C++ at this moment. Your Python is not as strong as your C++ because you only did one semester of Python. But what about all the other programming languages that there are like Go, Java, and JavaScript? So the point of this class is to introduce you to these different programming languages and explain to you why there is so many of them. Like, different families and groups of programming languages, why were they invented and what problem are they trying to solve? Another thing is when people want to start out with coding, they always ask, what's the best programming language that I should learn? And anyone who knows anything about anything will just say, well, it depends. What are you trying to do? It sounds like you're being a little dismissive, but it really is like that. So after this class, you have the tools to intelligently talk about and compare different programming languages and explain to someone what is the best option depending on whatever their project is about. Third class is computer architecture, which is a very, very heavy theory class. Just so much hardware so much overlap with the computer organization and assembly language class like i had to do the same type of assembly programming for this class once again the only thing i enjoyed about this class was being in the same classroom with computer engineering majors because during lecture they would ask such thoughtful amazing questions that i would always wonder wow you're really interested in this stuff you're really into it I could never think of that because I don't care. All right, I'm only halfway joking because it's always cool to get confirmation from yourself that, okay, I made the right choice with my major. I'm really just into coding. And it's also satisfying to see other people in their element and see that they also made the right choice with their major. First class is software engineering, which is a very heavy coding class, but you'll be writing code in Java. This class is the next most important class after data structures and algorithms because it's meant to elevate your coding skills to the next level. In lecture, you're gonna learn about the different methodologies of creating a piece of software. And for homework, you'll actually be doing a group project with like three or four of your classmates. You'll get together, you're required to come up with a project idea that is feasible within a span of a semester. And then you'll just work on it. You'll develop this throughout a semester. It's really cool. I would not stop talking about this class in the behavior portion of my interviews. Recruiters love to ask you, like, tell me about a time that there was a technical issue and you were part of a team. How did you work to resolve that? What was your role in that situation? And I would literally either talk about my hackathon project experience or I would just 
start straight up talking about what I did in this class. So you should really put your all in doing well in the group project because it helps you learn a lot about you and how you would be if you were to do an actual job. If you don't know how to use Git version control before the semester starts, definitely get into it because the only way that the instructor knows that the deadlines are being met and everyone is pulling their weight as they should is through GitHub. The fifth class is Automata and Computation, which is a very heavy theory class. This class is actually like the second semester of discrete structures, the class that you take in lower division classes. When I first got to East Bay, I was told that this is going to be one of the hardest classes that I take. I'm sure that there are still people being told that, but it's pretty much a lie. It's not hard, it's just really confusing. It's just like theoretical computer science 101 basically you just get to learn about complexity theory polynomial hierarchies the turing machine it's not like something you can use the only thing that i really learned in this class that i can actually use from day-to-day -day life is regular expressions not even like how to code regular expressions in a specific language just a theory behind it the homework for this class is literally it's not hard you have to draw a state machine and that's like a bunch of circles you're just literally drawing circles the whole semester and you draw an arrow because that's how your state machine takes strings in, right? And like maybe an arrow goes from here, but then also points to a previous state. And that means that it's a loop. That's all the homework is. Okay, I'm going to stop there because this list is very long and I don't want the video to be too overwhelming, but there's a part two coming. There's more classes to talk about and you already know what it is. You know what I'm talking about right now. You've got to subscribe. There's no other choice here. You have got to subscribe and you've got to. It's like, it's, oh my God, it's so important. Did you not know? You have to smash the like button. If you've taken any of these five classes, tell me which one you hated the most because I'm here for the drama. <laughs> yeah.